Let me know when to go. Oh, go for it. Hey everyone, welcome to T3 Media's review news, that's entertainment news, and reviews by fans for fans. I'm your host, Amy Newman, and this is our weekly show where we come together, ask fans to talk about trending topics, and give you a place to express what you think about it all. We're talking through the media today. Joining me, as always, is Chris Fagan. Prepare yourself, guys. Uh, but a little behind the scenes uh, there, Amy there totally was uh, put thrown uh, to the wolves. I was like, hey, by the way, you're doing the opener. And she's like, what? I'm not. You, I'm not ready for that. And I'm like, come on. Be, be, come on, be a pal. She's like, Ugh. I mean, nobody likes my voice. So I'm like, please. And she's like, fine. But um, I, oh, there you go. There's my camera. Sorry about that. I'm talking. You guys can't even see me. There we go. But yeah, guys, thank you guys for joining for another week of uh, talking to the media. My face in your brain, Chris. That's, that, it. That's, that's exactly what I was going for. Like exactly, that's what I was trying to go for. The uh, but but again, I don't think you want to be associated with that my uh, punchable face, like I, as I always say. But we got uh, you know it's Friday, so you know uh, helping me out once again is the 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 OG of uh, talking to the media. Sorry about that with the logo thing again. I forgot to turn that off again. I did it again. Amy, how are you doing? How is your Friday going so far? Oh, it's going. It's going. You got you got a busy schedule uh, today. You're, aren't you Aren't you going to be on another show uh, later on? Yes, I'm going to be on uh, on the Keek back tonight. Check that out on um, I think volume volume dot com slash the Keeg K E E G. It was so funny how when he told me, I was like, I was like. The Keeg. I love that name. What is that? And he's like, it's just geek backwards. backwards. Yeah. And the and, and I felt like him judging me the way like I like like you couldn't figure that out, Chris. Really? And I'm like, it was so simple that it was like brilliant. It was it's one of those things. That's, sorry, sorry. Uh that's volume.com slash the Keeg show. I just checked. Oh yeah, you gotta get it right. Otherwise he gets Dimitri gets so pissed. <laughs> yeah, it's tonight at nine o'clock Pacific. So. Yeah, so check out the uh, the, the key. That is geek, spelled backwards. Mm-hmm. I and you guys probably knew that, but I'm such an idiot. I I couldn't figure it out until he told me. He's like, this it's it's not it's not as hard as you think it is, Chris. I'm like, yes, it is. Everything is. But guys, welcome to another episode of Talking Through the Media's. Uh, we're going to go over a couple of the training topics of the week uh, and uh, just let you guys know what we think about it if you want to share your thoughts on it if you're joining us uh, live or if you're joining us after the show comment below and just uh, tell us what you think about some of the things that we're talking about and maybe we'll uh, talk about it on an upcoming we got your mail Uh, before I start the show um, I want to quickly just remind you guys if you want to listen to the show on our podcast you can find us by the way you can find us on Google Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, uh, or iTunes. Uh, just search for Talking to the Medias or T3 Medias, and please follow us there. Remember to like, subscribe, share your thoughts during the show while we monitor comments because we want to hear them. That was Amy's old, uh, opener, but I, I moved it. If you really, it really does help us out if you want to support the growth of the channel. Become a member for exclusive videos or donate on our podcast, our Patreon, Cash App, etc. Don't forget, during the show, you can also tip a question on streamlabs.com slash t3media slash tips, super chats or YouTube, or hit the donate button if you're watching on Twitch. Uh, it not only helps us bring you more content you want to see it also gives us great things to discuss during the show so don't forget to do that guys only if you're watching live if you're um if you're pierre watching live hey pierre how you doing if you're i'm gonna say hi to you right now because you're always out there uh supporting the show okay right off the bat let me start off with a few things to spotlight real quick I know you don't like the word spot. I like. I'm gonna. I brought spotlight back. I'm sorry. I, I just loved it. Love the word. Like, like I'm not the very most creative person. Amy's got to be the one to create the titles for these things. Uh, otherwise, they suck. But when I create them, I, I, I'm sorry. I pick sucky titles. I'm sorry. I was not anti spotlight. You were. You you hated my. You was like it should be called Amy Light. <laughs> I think I just. <laughs> I think no. I think it was when we were doing like. If I'm being honest, I think it was when we were doing like three big topics and then spotlights. And I was just like, this is too many topics. (laughs) 
<laughs> I remember. I remember now. It all, yeah, it all just came screaming back. Well, it was also 2020. And I was real mad about everything. Yeah. Oh, I remember now. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. I'm real mad about everything now too, but you know, it's softened because I can hug my friends. My bad. Okay. I, you know, you're totally right. I do remember now. But the first thing I wanted to put a spotlight on uh-huh. <laughs> was. Uh, uh-huh. Pinocchio, you brought this to my attention. You're like, why are there so many damn Pinocchio There's movies? Too, too many Pinocchi. To, that is a good word for it. Pin- Thank so you. there is uh, there there is a upcoming Pinocchio uh, movie on Netflix, uh, created by uh, Guillermo del Toro. Uh, there was one uh, last year from Lionsgate. That's the picture on the left. Please watch that, guys. Watch that trailer watch Only, that like, trailer you know those things where like as a comedian you mm-hmm. see something that's not supposed to be funny and it just wrecks your whole day because you're like fuck i'll never do anything that funny that, <laughs> it, it, and, it, and it wasn't trying to be funny it wasn't it trying wasn't, to no. be. look like like watch this Lionsgate. uh, up, uh like, i think the movie did it come out last i think it came out last year uh from lion's gate uh pinocchio the, you know tell us all this time you know, I, no man. Really, ma- how did these people learn nothing from Geppetto? Like, we don't, we don't want Pinocchio movies. I mean, the original Pinocchio film from Disney was great, and then sure. everything else has been trying to like. It feels like they've been trying to like. Do we go to the original story of Pinocchio, which is supposed right. to be so dark and like which really? Which is why I am curious about the Guillermo. Guillermo That's what I'm curious about. Guillermo del Toro. There like, you go. like speculate on that. What do you do? You think he's gonna del Toro it up and give us close to the original Pinocchio, the one where he? Know. You know what I would love? What's that? Like, well, first of all, you said that's the concept art that kind of bug bug fella on the uh, on the right there. Yeah. Um, giving me very like James and the Giant Peach vibes, like the CGI, like with the spider and the <laughs> right. That's a movie. I feel like I could dream. <laughs> Jack, uh, Jack, uh, uh, James, uh, James and the Giant Peach. Yeah, the like nineties one. Yeah, nineties early two thousands one. I would love sort of a like a Coraline vibe. Like I know that's not quite like Del Toro's vibe, but like that. If we're talking how sort of dark you go with it, you want you want it to be like like, uh, a, like Tim Burtonish. Yeah, like a can kids handle this kind of? Yeah, they can, but like it's a little into. I love those movies because I feel like adults are more scared of them than the kids. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I feel like more adults are freaked out by. I, I think uh, like well, I, what, the let... author of Coraline was like the every adult I showed this to, like the original book. Yeah, like every adult I showed this to was terrified, and like my daughter loved it. So. Right, <laughs> like, do I want to ch- to wash my son's bed sheets tomorrow morning after watching showing him this movie? That's the question. Listen, kids are going to be scared of whatever you show them. Yeah, so. yeah, they yeah, very emotional. But I, you know, I I agree. I just I, I think you're gonna go. I I don't want it like edgy and dark, and that's the thing. I I think it's it could be interesting because I think Del Toro is a a smart enough filmmaker to not go edgy for edgy's sake but i think just finding a a little more mature nuanced dark tone around this story could be something interesting i, I will say that is not a friendly jo- i just my brain just put together that that that's jiminy cricket and yeah. like, if that thing popped up it was like you shouldn't do that i wouldn't do it because i, I- so if I'm not mistaken, I think Jiminy Cricket, like in the uh, the Gear uh, Del Toro version, is uh, Jiminy Cricket lives inside of Pinocchio's like chest or his in his heart, where his heart's supposed to be in that part of the body. I think that's where I, I heard. I, I read it in the maybe yeah. it was a synopsis. I mean, he is made of what what happens when he becomes a real boy? So it's just like some real like body. Like, Je- like Jiminy better get his ass out of there quick. This alien chest burst. Oh, <laughs> dude, dude, that, like that, if you want. That's, that's the shocking third act. Um, that yeah, he becomes he becomes a real boy, and then Geppetto kills him because he's trying to survive and get out of there. Like ah, ah, and I try to burst through those new organs and stuff. That I know, nothing will top. Nothing will top that that Lion's Gate. That lion's ga- guys. Oh God. Let me, okay. Let me. Please let me, look up the trailer. L- l- I don't want to spoil it. Let me. Let me. Let me get serious for a second here. I never wanted to punch a f- an animated kid so much in the face, 
when I Caillou. Caillou. Oh, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll I'll circle around. But this kid on um, this trailer, this whole like, damn, I want to be a real boy. I don't like that. I'm. It's like I want like I I felt like this was was this movie. If this movie was meta and it's making fun of like Gen Z or something like that, then it's brilliant because. Whoever's doing the voice acting of Pinocchio has captured that whiny, annoying little, like, you know, saying, the, having those drawn out A's at the end of every sentence, uh, like that. That's how he spoke. I hated it. And I don't recommend, I uh, watch the trailer if you just want to, want to punch a kid. What did, what did you feel? Yeah, I'm so funny. <laughs> I don't need to watch a trailer for that, Chris. You didn't check it out? Oh my God. Uh... No, I'm saying I don't need to, to watch a trailer to. <laughs> To want to punch it? <laughs> oh my god! Wow. Okay. Well, that's how we felt about the uh, the those Pinocchio trailers, and I, and you know, and I, and I agree that I'm. I'm looking... What is the third one? There's there is there are there are so many. Uh, let me let me fix this. There's there's another. Uh, no, Pinocchio like movie. There's like, a third there's like four. Or five. Oh, oh, oh! Is that the live action? One? Yes, that's right. yes. I don't know who Tom made Hanks. it. Oh my goodness! Oh, this is such a good. Tom Hanks, Cynthia Revo, Luke mm -hmm. Evans, mm -hmm. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Keegan Michael Key, and Lorraine Bracco. Now maybe there's some hope on that. Wait, wait, is that coming out or did it come out? Or are we talking? That is. Uh, that's going to be a Disney Plus upcoming. Mm. I'm not going to watch it, but. <laughs> I mean, it, it may, and maybe it might be loosely based on their. So it's like, oh, so it's like live action with animation. Oh, but that's just like what they're doing with every, yeah. every, every Disney. Movie. Why, why, why is everybody going so hard on Pin with Pinocchio right now? It just doesn't make any sense. Pinocchio. I nobody feel like it's just weird because I feel like it was just like coming up in the roster of like Disney is live yeah. action, literally. Yeah, literally. we're live actioning everything. But like, yeah. learn, learn from what you what they did with with Dumbo. I mean, does any did, did anybody watch that movie? Did anybody see Dumbo, the live action version? Exactly. So it's like I understand going back to some of these movies, but I'd rather see a live action Toy Story than oh god no. I would love to see those to see those toys come to life and scare well, the hell out of Sid. And that's, that's honestly, the thing. I feel like my biggest issue, and this is a whole different topic, so I'm trying not to sidetrack us too hard. My Chuck. biggest <laughs> issue with the live action Disney mm -hmm. is like the best thing they can hope to be is oh that was fine kind of made me miss the original kind of probably gonna go home and watch that which i guess is the point like it's all just building the disney empire yeah well you know <laughs> but like with the amount of money we're pouring into these it's just like when the best you can hope for is like that's pretty good i i feel like it's because the this generation with the technology that they're being born into and what they're seeing when they go back and look at the old stuff. I mean, back back when we were kids, we could go back and look at the old stuff and still have an appreciation for it because the technology. No, uh, I uh, disagree. I, I mean, disagree. I think it holds up. I I I I, dis, I would disagree with me too on it for those for those people who are only introducing their kids to the original stuff first but you entered uh, like i'm this is what i'm going through in my house literally like no i won't watch I won't if watch you he, let, if for for anybody out there if you're if you never want to have uh, have kids like like good don't because you don't do this to your kids if you do if you do have kids and if you want to introduce them to, to disney do not do what I did. Don't introduce them to the new stuff first because they will not appreciate the old school stuff unless they're like naturally have an appreciation for these things. But my kids, I thought, hey, I'm a movie guy. I love movies. They're 50% of me. My, okay. my DNA is in there. They're going to love these movies. No. My daughter said so something bad about like Star Wars and I almost kicked her out of the house. <laughs> but are we talking like... I because it's like if you go back or are we talking like if you watched um i'm trying to think of one from like my like hercules with them they'd be like no this doesn't hold up or well, are we talking well, like, no, well some some of the like the the hercules is... i watched no white recently mm -hmm. it's brilliant when you consider the historical context that shit's slow. Like nothing happened, or not even. Slow. It's just nothing happened. That, yeah, like, and, and there's that, some songs, and she sort of dusts around the house, and like it's 
it's like an hour 15 long and it's well not to, you're right about that thin plot and like i do think there's an element of like yeah, the ones from like the '60s and the and previous, like Snow White and some of those OG ones, just pacing wise and stuff don't hold up. But I think if you showed your kids like the ones I grew up, like that Golden Age, like Lion King, Aladdin, Hercules, Pocahontas, give or take, like the quality of the movie, I don't think hand drawn animation is. The issue. It, it might. It may be fifty fifty, but there will yeah. be a good number of kids who if you introduce them to the new stuff first because the technology is like why would i want to watch a cartoon of something where i could see why would i want to watch the lion king if i saw a, a, what looked like a real lion talking or something like that now i know it sounds like blasphemy because of what lion king did but trust I, me I guys show argue, though, like I, I feel like those don't work because that technology is just gonna because that kind of technology mm -hmm. ages itself out so fast that in a decade these live action ones that are super cgi heavy are not gonna hold up like hand drawn animation still looks great. It 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 does, but when you compare it to to very good CG, like I I don't know how to explain. It's like like it's not it's not like going back to like as far as like Snow White. But for example, if I if I were to try to show my kids the Rescuers Down Under, yeah, which a movie I loved as when I was their age. They would not. My mom. I remember my mom took me to see that one in the theaters, and that blew my mind. That e the the eagle, and when they went, uh, those two mice, and that, and, and the, the yeah, animation was like ahead of its time. A slower paced. Which, which one? Rescuers. No, rescuers. The first rescuers was slower paced. Rescuers Down Under was 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 better. Was more mm -hmm. uh, up to date to what was going on at the time with Little Mermaid, Aladdin, and stuff like that. But uh, because Rescuers was like 70s or early 80s and Rescuers Down Under was like 80, late 80s, 90s when the others, yeah. when, when Disney was like making, that's printing money. Um, but, but, well, it, but, so but, no, well, but if you show, but if, but with my kid, I've learned that if you show them the, the newer stuff and then try to go back to any of the 2D stuff, it has to be the highest quality Lion King, Aladdin quality, Little Mermaid quality or higher uh to keep their attention if you go below that quality the 90s quality to the 70s and 60s no they won't yeah but they I, won't again do i it. don't think that's an animation because you if you tried to show your kids like the original parent trap they would mm. also be like this is boring like i don't think that's an animation thing i think that's just a pacing of movies thing mm -hmm. but ultimately i think it, the real answer comes down to money <laughs> millennials are having children they are nostalgic for these movies. Childless millennials will go see them because of their nostalgia and parent millennials will take their children and they make money. Yeah. And that's why they're making 85 Pinocchios. <laughs> Right, exactly, and 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 it's like the it, it, I don't know what's going on with the quality of these, because uh, Lion Gate is known for some good animation. I looked at this trailer and I'm like, where's the? I mean, I, I'm I, I should have looked at the budget because I I feel like the budget is probably going to say something like it was made for like twenty million dollars, and that, which means that somebody's <laughs> walking around with seventeen million dollars in their pocket yeah, right now. No, it looked like one of those. Um... You know those like weird knockoff movies, like those like foreign kind of like like where like some Brazilian movie company or whatever will be like, we're gonna make car adventure, and it's just Instead like of... weird knockoff cars. Like it looks like one of those. The knockoff car, yeah, exactly. All like all the cars in the in this car uh, knockoff, they're all um, electronic cars. They're all let's Thunder say, Magoo. They, they, like... they were they're ho hoping it would be sponsored by Tesla, but <laughs> and but Tesla. Oh God! Yeah, light. Yeah, light. Instead of yeah, oh Thunder Magoo. That's crazy. That's funny. Thunder. Yeah, yeah. Thunder. Thunder. Uh, McRoller or something like that. I don't know. Some yeah, some exactly. stupid name like that. Yeah. Those. Um. That's hey from the makers of Sharknado. Who knows? Uh. <laughs> like oh well. Let us know what you guys think about the the upcoming Pinocchio movies. And I'm and just like Amy said, she's right. I'm excited. Uh, the only one I'm excited for is the one coming up on Netflix. I will check that out yeah. because if that Jiminy Cricket is any indication of what we're going to see, that is going to be something like right, right out of the nightmare. Look at that thing right there. That's going to be crazy. Like skip the one on the left, click on the one on the right. Netflix, baby. 
That's how we do it. All right, uh, moving on to the, uh, to the to the next topic, real quick. Uh, we spent I, I, we went. I, I didn't know we were going to be able to stretch out a whole conversation on that. We yeah. oh, we we're out of time. <laughs> hey, that's it for. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta go. <laughs> the Pinocchio show. Before you go, real quick, did uh, you brought up uh, you brought this to my attention uh, as we saw that wor- uh, Wordle was bought mm-hmm. by the the New York Times. Mm-hmm. Wordle, Mr. and this is not a joke. Mr. Wardle mm-hmm. has sold Wordle. Wait, say that again, because I thought I, did, the, I, I think I just had a stroke. The man who invented <laughs> Wordle, his last name is Wardle, W A R D L E. No, for real? Yeah. And what, like, well, just like Amy says, like, uh, Wordle was bought by uh, Wordle was bought by the New York Times. And what people are worried about, why this is news, is because uh, you have to subscribe to the New York because Times. Because we can't have one nice thing. Well, you got you to subscribe to the New York Times. And people are worried that Wordle is going to now uh, be subscription-based. It won't be free Well, and the New anymore. York Times keeps going, no, 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 no. We're not going to put that behind a paywall mm. for now. Yeah. Like, literally, every time they say it, every and, time uh, they try to comfort it, the caveat is... Wordle will still be free as long as this... Uh, uh, and Until the end of this sentence. And then... Yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, like, just like Netflix. No, we won't raise the price of Netflix from $15 to 20 But check my bill out recently. No, because I feel like... And it's... it's Everybody, everybody I've like heard talking about this had the exact same response of like, good for that guy. This sucks. <laughs> like, what- it, was, it was a seven figure deal. Like dude made mm. crazy money. But I feel like so much of what people liked about Wordle was it was just nice. It was just, there was really, it was just a dude who made a word game for mm. his partner so they could have something to play together and it just kind of took off and it's fun and and he consistently was just like i have no interest in monetizing this i just like it being a little free thing people can play i'm doing and, it for the people this is for the and people. like basically anytime you know and the new york times was especially like right now like it's definitely it's, it's how, funny how i feel like more than ever like in the last god two years now uh-huh. like since the pandemic hit and like i've seen a lot of jokes of like it's like it, it was Tiger King. It was sourdough bread. It's Wordle. <laughs> how much did they? How much did they pay for it? Uh, for it? All I've heard is seven figure deal. I've not heard an exact number. Happy oh yeah, happy, happy Friday, Pierre. Like I called it, Pierre. There you are, Pierre. Man, I love Pierre. Man, he's always there, always on time. <laughs> happy Friday happy to you too, Pierre. Uh, but I, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, yeah. Amy, I'm gonna, let me. Can I can I reveal something to you real quick? Have you never played the Wordle? Not only have I never played Wordle. Let me look at you. Let me look eye to eye. I've never heard of this game. I thought it was word. I was I was like words with friends. I thought that's what we were talking mm-hmm. about. I, I think never you should heard your little of Wordle. Up and do a Wordle right now. <laughs> We can play. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna incorporate more games on the uh, on the show again, like the spinning the wheel and things like that. We've I've been playing more games uh, lately. Wordle. Let's uh, we can we can uh, play Wordle I'm a, during I'm the a, show. I'm a Wordle let, girdle. Hey Pierre, let us know. Let me know what you think about that. Should we play games like Wordle while we're talking about the show? That would be a little distracting, but I'm down. If you like it, I love it. No, um, don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna just devolve into me checking my Instagram. Like what? Is that where what Wordle? Did, where, what did he do? Where did Wordle? Is that where Wordle is on Instagram? No, no, it's it's its own little thing. Mm-hmm. Do you know how Wordle works? I know how words with friends works. No, <laughs> it's Girl. like like I'm not cool because I've never heard of Wordle. <laughs> uh, you every day it's a it's a five letter word and it's a different word every day and I feel like part of why it took off so much is because you can only play once per day. Mm. So it's like you either get it or you don't. And you have six tries. You type in a word and it you hit enter and it tells you it's if it's the letter stays gray, that letter's not in the word. If the letter turns yellow, it's in that word, but not in that spot. And if it turns green, you have it in the right spot and you get six tries to try to figure out what the word is. And I oh. have only gotten one wrong. And it was the first time I played and I didn't know what I was doing. And now I have a 100% streak. So... Okay, well, and the New York Times is going to ruin my life. So, 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 and now New York Times is going to put a uh, a, a you know subscribe to the New York Times filter on it, or you will never uh, or ads or, or ads. It's, yeah. just, it's it's just peak like 
fucking capitalism. I was just about to say it's capitalism. It's yeah. the American way. Okay. Like, this is successful. It can't just be a guy. But on the flip side, the dude created something that connected with people, and I am happy he's getting his seven figure deal. Like, good for that guy. Yeah. And it's annoying, but if it had to, like, if it had to go to somebody, like, it could have been Facebook, it could have been Amazon. Like, there are far more insidious evil corporations that could have had it, I guess. Is like I can already see the and the people will I think honestly if they fuck with our wordle that might actually be the thing that like gets the people to the street. Yeah, yeah, nope. <laughs> yeah, them them uh uh the getting the military to to steal voting machines and uh, trying to steal elections and that that's that, were that like, they were like eh, it's a Friday but wordle <laughs> with our wordle. <laughs> Bust out the guillotine. I can already see the commercials making fun of and stuff. They sold Wordle to New York City. New York City. Come on, who remembers those commercials? Come on. Come on. Anybody remembers that? Am I really old? I was born in 1992. This chili was made in New York City. Oh, okay. New yes, York yes, City. Get a rope. Ah, oh, come on. Yeah, okay. I'm old. I'm 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 about to be come 42 years young in a couple of days. So I'm I am old. I, I mean, I mean, I still look 23. So it doesn't crack. Let us know what you guys think about Wordle, guys. Uh, like like while while uh, Amy's over there holding back her tearful laughs at my attempt to to, to claim that I look young. Uh, she, so, so are you do you play wordle i have never heard of this as well as you do chris um, i mean it's 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 just it's the thing it's just it just you know it doesn't crack that's just what it is yeah. that's just what it is oh no I'm a, I'm I'm a white lady i'm gonna age like mel it's, uh, what, did, what, did, what, what was that on uh zoolander or what was that like when you like you know how hard it is to be really 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 good <laughs> Anyway, let us know what you guys think about Wordle. I've never heard of it, but if you like it, I love it, guys. Moving on to the next topic uh, of the day real quick. Uh, one of our main topics uh, coming from uh, Deadline, the uh, unmasking of Rudy Giuliani on Fox. Uh, guys, this was hilarious, by the way. Uh, <laughs> unmasking of Rudy Giuliani on Fox, the mass singer, prompted Judge uh, Kim Jong. Uh, is it, am I saying it right? Is it Jong? And Please Robin Thick to, uh, to uh, Robin Thick to walk Please feel off. Please you tell me I'm a dumbass in the comments. <laughs> they walked off in protest of the fact that uh, that the that one of the mass singers was in fact Rudy uh, uh, Giuliani. There, uh, you can see uh, right here. Uh, this isn't now. By the way, this right here isn't. Let me delete myself and uh, Amy real quick. This right here is not the 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 mask that he was wearing. That has not been revealed yet. Sure, that would just be silly. I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, which wait, which one? The left or the right? But uh, <laughs> but he uh, apparently he was on the show on the Mass Singer because Rudy's got to raise a little money because he's having a little, a little some some legal issues. I don't know if you know about this, but uh, Rudy was on the Mass Singer and when he lost immediately, according to this spoiler alerts. I'm sorry if you, if you love the Mass Singer. I'm sorry if I'm spoiling this for you. How do you genuine question? Mm. I don't partake. I don't watch The Masked Singer. Even, reality shows are not, I don't I don't partake. I'm not anti-reality show on the whole. I am anti this show specifically because it feels so Stupid? deeply like a show. <laughs> it sounds like a show that exists in universe of another TV show. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it feels like an insane show people would be watching. Like someone once said, like it feels like an in-universe BoJack Horseman show, and I've never been able to like look at it any other way since. But I've never been able to figure out: Do you lose the mask singer by being a bad singer? Yeah, that like the best, or by people figuring out who you are. Like who? No, though, though they try to. From what I understand, from what I remember, they try to. Um, 
they try to figure out who you are and they uh and simultaneously they will vote you off if you're not like if you don't give the best performance or sing uh, the best uh, compared to the other contestants so that's it's two folds it's like they're while trying to figure so who out was genuinely trying to to sing yeah, the, yeah. Uh, little wayne was even um, on the mass singer so i mean it's for some reason like i i thought that this was going to be a show where um uh where just like like celebrities that that like beast list celebrities were gonna be on there. I I I, I did that so on purpose. The second the second you did that, I was like, that is perfect. I was like, I felt like this was a show for like where like B list or C list celebrities would get on. Then well, like, like it's weird to me too. Okay, okay, okay. The fact that it's not just singers, mm -hmm. like the fact that. There was a gnat. That wasn't me trying to like Jedi mind. Yeah, she's trying to get trying to get that little that little uh, Teddy Ruspin that from hell <laughs> away from her. <laughs> it honestly feels like someone fed headlines into a headline generator. But mm. the fact that the singers on the mass singers are not just singers, like that it could be literally just anyone. people. The mass people. It's just like also insane to me, like that I'm supposed to be able to hear someone singing and be like, "Was that Rudy Giuliani?" Right, like, right. Beyond the obvious well, like, well, insanity of this whole situation, and like from the clips that I've seen, he should not be a contestant on this show, from, given everything that's happened in the last like five years. From, but, from the clips that I've seen during the show, like before, during, and after, like before and after uh, performances, they give hints to who they are. They'll be like, I did this, and blah. They, but they give these the, the most vague. I do like to imagine that, like, his. <laughs> his I once like, tried to help a president to overthrow an election. Right. Ooh, who could or I? Even that, just like in the middle of his song, like the. the I, I was the, America's he mayor. Starts like leaking hair. Yes. Back. Yes, that would be a great tip. Like, like put some hair dye on the side of the mask's face and just yeah. drip it down. I was once America's mayor. Oh, did I say too much? Oh, damn it, Rudy, you did it again. I should probably be in jail right now. Yeah. The only reason why he's subjecting himself to these crazy things is because of his legal troubles. He's just trying to raise money. Well, it's just, it's just. It is sad that some. Sure, that some honestly, it probably was to some degree a PR move of yeah. like, the more we can like normalize these mm. people as public figures the more maybe we can just sweep the whole that that's the sweet under the rug. that's that's sweet that you would think that it was that simple of like a PR move thing no Rudy needs money <laughs> I, I am never gonna uh, think anything else Rudy oh man oh you're gonna give me a 10 G's to sing in a mask I would have did it for two. Oh yeah, this is great. You know, I, I'm, I don't know. I I think I think it might be even more insidious. I'm standing by the like, you know, it's the whole like, if that's popping up when you Google Rudy Giuliani, what isn't popping up when you Google Rudy Giuliani? <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, Marsha, what was it Marsha Barrett Cohen's? What was that situation with the? Uh, oh, the Sasha Baron Cohen. Sasha yeah. Sasha Baron Cohen. Yeah. Oh yeah. That that he I I hope and I hope he never lives that down. That is yeah. so fun. That would have been a good hint. You want to try to figure out who I I, I want. Let me just uh, let me just fondle myself. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Like yeah. Let me lay down and try to yeah uh, unprovoked uh, try to yeah fondle myself real quick in front of a reporter. That yeah. Are you Rudy Giuliani? Oh damn it! <laughs> they got. I guess. Why do I look like I'm sponsoring Coca Cola? I do not want to do that. <laughs> and then there's the the additional like the mass singer producers agreed to this. Which I guess, I guess when you're a show that ridiculous, it's just an any press is good press situation. Mm. But like, Jesus, hey. guys. I, it would have it made more sense back in the day when, before Disney bought Fox. But now that Disney owns Fox, I'm like, why? Why? Mm. I mean, not, not, you're not. Say you would even delve into the political sphere. At right. Like, exa at exactly. Like, that, like the, the, the insane specificity I, of like this person. Yeah. But like that you would get involved with anyone given how divided the political sphere is right, right. now. I know I'm a lefty. I'm not, I'm not, I never hide that. I know I'm a lefty. Yeah. Like, but, like my personal feelings about uh, Ruby Giuliani but, in this situation. Yeah. Entire shit show and Ex how much all these people should be 
fucking in jail. Aside, yeah. Like, like why, would, why would you I put him on? Be having, exactly. I wouldn't maybe be having as strong a reaction, but yeah, even if they had, you know, fucking Bill Clinton, it would still be like, ah, no, <laughs> don't do that. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I love the saying, and I love it when you wear a blue dress. Oh. But uh, I, I just feel like there are certain politicians out there, like when... For example, when Trump's uh, 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 what was the press secretary, his old press secretary, when that guy was on Dancing with the Stars, I forgot his name. The guy who was like Donald Trump had the, the largest crowd of any inauguration. Yeah. Pe- oh, that guy, that? that big, that that huge freaking liar, who Jenny uh, who McCarthy played on Saturday Night Live. Um, I, did, I even though I don't like him. Oh, it's Sean Spicer. Sean Spicer, like yeah, I don't like Sean Spicer. Oh yeah, okay, okay, I'm a lefty. All right, so what? But I didn't care when Sean Spicer was doing reality TV and doing all that. So I didn't care. Even though I didn't like what he did, even though I don't agree with his politics, even though I thought he kissed up to Trump, even though I thought, thought he, I, I felt he, I knew he lied for Trump and he admitted he lied a lot and I didn't like it. I don't care if he goes on TV and he makes money. I don't care. But what this dude did, what Giuliani did, no, no way. No, you are not coming anywhere near my network. But that's I think just me. He also, I think it's just very indicative of how kind of weird and and screwed up the whole sort of these people are not I don't think any of them should be on reality TV. They're not entertainers. Right. They're not they're you know, they're public servants. They're people in the political sphere. These are not people who should be Well, he's not really a public servant anymore. Well, he's he's true, he's, he's, it's he's a out weird there. like cult of personality that exists of like why why? Yeah. Why are we letting this person on here <laughs> there's your thumbnail right there i just what that that look you just gave <laughs> with that this right. whole thing like the mass singer as a show melts my brain so like honestly you know when i i would file this away with yeah this might as well happen yeah right uh right pierre says yeah the mass singer episode was a shocker rudy should never be on that show <laughs> Exactly. Like, yeah. Like I said, like, like you said, I'm not trying to make this like, uh, like it's only for the people who agree with my personal politics. I don't know. Talking to the media, see through media is not about that. This, I don't care if you're concerned. I have plenty of conservative friends. I have, I have a, my best, one of my best friends is a black conservative and I love giving him hell. I love going back with Roy. If you're watching, oh man, I love giving you grief, but, um, but I, I'm very respectful for everybody. I don't care what your beliefs are and, and whatnot, but it's, it's about, uh, decency. Like the thing, like, like you said, you brought up Bill Clinton. Like I wouldn't want Bill Clinton. I wouldn't want to see Bill Clinton. No, I wouldn't want to see people again it's the weird cult of it's personality yeah. why are these people being treated like celebrities yeah, why are so- non-singers on the mass singer i have no idea what their singing voices sound like that's too hard this show is stupid and my brain hurts yeah but anyway let us know what you guys think about uh rudy giuliani being on the the mass singer i mean hey if you're a Rudy fan, uh, go ahead, tip him uh, some money because he really needs it uh, because he's got some legal troubles coming. Let's move on real quick to I know because I know you gotta uh, t- uh, gotta go from Variety. Uh, from Variety, uh, the 2022 Winter Olympics uh, is, is <laughs> gets off to a surreal start on a conflicted NBC. Did you so? Did you hear about this? The whole the whole issue with. Uh, <laughs> well, what's going on with uh, the the Winter Olympics? If you if you haven't heard about it, let me let me, uh, let me pull it up. The, what, yeah, what specifically? Uh, so I got uh, I got an article that uh, I pulled up. I think I, I know. I've heard yeah, I've heard some stories. I'm not following it super closely. Well, from uh, like I said, this comes in uh, from uh, from Variety. Well, one of the major things that's going on uh, with the the Winter Olympics and oh, my graphic is is not where it's supposed to be. There it is. With the Winter Olympics, is that the because um, it's being uh, held in in Beijing and right. and uh, what what's going on? Poli- we were just talking about politics a minute ago. Uh, the sanctions and stuff are going on with uh, America and China, uh, with what's going on with Russia and whatnot. We, so there's a lot, a lot of people that, that are talking, trying to uh, protest and, um, and for us to boycott watching the the Winter Olympics. It's very controversial this year uh, because we're not too, America's not too happy with what's going on over there in uh, Beijing right now. Um, and I had the 
I'm gonna have to stall for a second because I had the uh, the article up, but I'll just read what I, I have right here. So from Variety, it says, uh, with the host country under a microscope for reported human rights abuses and the new alliance against the United States uh, with uh, Vladimir Putin, Russia, NBC had no choice but to uh, alternate its uh, giddy coverage of Team USA with dire reminders of the particularly fraught world stage for the opening ceremony. The NBC solution to this problem largely came down to the hiring of two new correspondents, Bloomberg News. Andy Brown and Yale professor uh, uh, Jing Su, who could bring in their Chinese expertise to uh, contextualize the propaganda on screen. So, of course, so when, uh, there, there it is right there, the propaganda on screen. So, what I guess what was going on during the opening of the Winter Olympics was the fact that they were they had a lot of propaganda uh, going on and in MSNBC because this is also like being streamed live on Peacock. They're making a whole big th- deal about where they're streaming it and, and whatnot. And so they were like, I guess they were worried about how to balance it because Beijing was definitely going to um, spread propaganda. So yeah. they wanted to get For so many reasons this year. It does just feel like one big, like Ugh, read the room. <laughs> mm. So they had to get ahead of a lot of things, yeah. but at the same time, you know, if America is in some competitions, we got to We want to cheer for them. You know what yeah. was weird? I, I don't give a damn about the winter Olympics. I, I know who um, was that snowboarder. What's his name? The, the, uh, the redhead guy, the the snowboarder. I know he's cool. Uh, he's he's in that picture, but he's like right behind you. I can't I can't remember his name, and I and I'm covering his face by accident right, uh, right there. Uh, but that's not what I'm excited about. You know what I'm what, what I'm excited about uh, and what I want to see curling. I don't know curling. why I want to see what's gonna happen with the curling team. I the guys who won the gold last time. This the guy said we started a curling team. Just because we were a group of guys who were just trying to hang out and get away from our wives for a little while and just do something for fun. And now we won the Olympic gold medal. Like, it's just a, it's just a group of guys who yeah. are like, we were just trying, hey, man, I was just trying to get away from, have, play poker and just chill out with some dudes and we just play some curling. And now they're like the, one of the, the they're like the best curlers in the world or in America and they won the gold last time. So I'm first I don't know why I love that story. I just want I, I, I lately I don't know for the past 10 years I've been fascinated by curling. I don't know why. That's the only thing I'm excited about for the Winter and you Olympics. You love some ice skating routines. Doesn't the Winter Olympics also feature like people like skiing and then like, getting rifles and shooting like guns and Yes. What is up with this? <laughs> Did you want you watch this? I feel like, yeah, I'm like not, and maybe it's partly, yeah, the China thing and the COVID thing. And the, I feel like I'm just seeing very, ooh, we have bots in the chat. Oh, cool. Hey, bots, what's, what's going on? on? For us? Hi, bots. Um, what's on? Attractive, attractive milfs in my hey. area. Chris, I gotta go. And click here for a good time. Speaking of the Winter Olympics, click here for, uh, no, no, no. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, so are you going to be watching the Winter Olympics? I don't have Peacock, so probably not. <laughs> mm. I think it's going to be. It's, uh, oh, you don't. Oh, you don't have Peacock. Nah. Oh, what's going on? But uh, let's move on. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, every, every yeah, it's all. I'm not a I'm not a political scientist and I don't pretend to be. That's all very interesting. And it's very interesting that their answer was basically like, yeah, this isn't ideal, but what if we bring some people to um contextualize? <laughs> yeah, let's see. Like like for example, right like here. I guess that's all you can really do at that point, short of fully, you know, boycotting. Mm-hmm. And they, but well, they they have well, yeah, a lot. Well, a lot of people are boycotting it, but they're, sure. they're right now they're but they're, they're like trying if, to if, you know us as a country are choosing not to do that. Yeah, I guess someone has to cover it. And... Yeah, and they're trying to balance it by getting people who right. really can counter any of the propaganda that's going on on it. Like right, I don't know much about it, and I'm sorry if I'm if I'm ignorant to it. Because for for one, I'm not too in, involved with the Winter Olympics, um, and. So and I haven't even really watched anything, but I for some I don't know what it is about it. I'm a black dude and I am interested in curling. That is that 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 got right there. That has to be a meme or something. I don't know. It's weird, but I am so I don't know why I'm so fascinated with curling. So I will be checking out the 
excuse me, the curling. Yeah, it sort of, of feels it. like the human rights violation situation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> God, it should be a little more, you should, forefront of the conversation. Yeah, uh, it, uh, I'm sorry. I, I, oh, damn it. That, oh, that, I don't mean you you're calling me out. Curling. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah, it's um, it's not ideal. It's like it's right here it says, "It's no exaggeration to say that every sporting event of the past two years have felt uncanny, uh, uncanny to witness." Uh, with the extreme of... I like how they're having to try to find words that aren't unprecedented. Yeah. We really a use mass athletes, quota. <laughs> mass athletes waving, uh, uh, waving up to an empty stand and unmasked uh, masses cheering as COVID cases keep spiking. But these Winter Olympics come uh, with an extra layer of unease with the host country of China doing its damnedest to play down its domestic policies of censorship and propaganda. So, I mean... A lot of controversy going on with the Winter Olympics this year, and uh, it's uh, it's only going to get, uh, I guess, crazier as the as the days go by, as the, these uh, events go in. So let us know what you guys think about uh, the Winter Olympics. Are you excited about it? Are you looking forward to seeing it? Do you, are you like, uh, I want to just, I'm just in it for the curling, just like me. Um, let us know what you guys think about that. So let's move on to the last topic real quick, because I know you got to go. I've held, I've held you for way over an overtime. So we'll move on uh, to the last topic. Uh, what is the last topic oh, of the day? Sorry, just before we get to that, uh, apparently they did bring in someone from the, I'm going to mispronounce it, the we- Uyghur Muslim group that is getting... Uh, uh basically uh what would the word be uh the the group that is being subjected to these human rights violations mm, okay in China. they had someone from that ethnic group as part of the torch lighting apparently which it's like that's a nice symbol could you stop well, yeah people in concentration camps wow like, like thank you fix the problem thank you for letting me light the torch can you yeah. stop hurting my people now? Mm, yeah. yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's, that's wild. Mm. Uh, anyways, very dark subject. Um, but uh, we have our last subject, uh, the BAFTAs. So that is the British Academy of Film and Television Arts, or BAFTA. Uh, I believe the nominations were just announced. So BAFTA uh, was an organization founded in 1947 as the British Film Academy. Uh, and then uh, in 1958, the Academy merged with the Guild of Television Producers and Directors to form the Society of Film and Television, which eventually became the British Academy of Film and Television Arts in 1976. Um, they have charitable purposes where they aim to, quote, support, develop, and promote the art forms of the moving image by identifying and rewarding excellence, inspiring practitioners, and benefiting the public. Essentially, the award ceremony, uh, the BAFTA film ceremony, is the British equivalent of the Oscars. Uh, as of 2008, it happens in the Royal Opera House in London, uh, where, uh, and it is where the 75th British Academy Film Awards will be held on March 13th this year, honoring the best national and foreign films of 2021. Uh, but they did just announce their nominations. And as always, I think there's that element of film season oh, film award season even if this is more british specified sort of keeps you know if something's really on a roll mm-hmm. uh in award season it sort of becomes relevant to anybody who's interested in you know the oscars or the well not the globes anymore but. and we and yeah so if, for those of you so i i didn't know it's like like when when uh, amy was like let's talk about the baptist and i was like you know what uh, what well, i don't know much about the baptist and i thought I thought about it. I was like, because I love the Oscars, and I remember hearing about the BAFTA awards, and I was like, let me show how my my ignorance. I I wonder is the BAFTA awards the equivalent to? And sure enough, and I looked it up, and it, it turns out it is. It is the equivalent to the the British version of the of uh, the Oscars, and I totally respect um, how uh, the 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 the, st- the the level of. Um, I guess of education, of of dedication, of what over there they acting they take that very seriously. There's a reason why most of our uh, our heroes in our our comic book movies are British. There's a reason why when you watch Yellowstone, if you love that show Yellowstone, if you look at Beth, that the, one of the craziest, most country, most wildest cowboyish characters, Beth, 
is British. And, for, and it blows people's minds that the, the, the most country character on the show, wild heart, like stallion, like, ah, she's crazy. And she's so beloved. And she's not even uh, she's not even American. She's a uh, she's British. There's a reason. Do you reason. think it's interesting? Does she do kind of an accent? Because she 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 is whatever the, the she's the the country act, American accent that she's doing nailed it perfectly. I Every think person. It's interesting. It's actually easier for uh, American accent who have a British accent to do like a more like Southern or country American accent than like a really standardized neutral American dialect. People don't even realize that there are You're closer that there are different. Types of British accents, like oh my god, cogni and things like that. Know, yeah, you can literally all but tell what block someone is from. In Hello, areas. governor. Just like that. <laughs> no, but like I, I, you know, I've spent some time in the UK. It is, it is specific down to the point of like, oh, that's a, you know, that's a West London accent. That's an accent from this part of London, like the towns. That it's so, so, so specific. But, mm -hmm. um. Anyways, yes, we do have our BAFTA nominations. One thing I think is interesting, it's very similar to the Oscars, mm -hmm. but you do have, um, in addition to Best Film, Outstanding British Film, uh, Outstanding Debut by a British Writer, Director, or Producer mm -hmm. is a category, as well as, I mean, they have the standard, like original screenplay, for, director, adapted screenplay, actor, actress. What do we have for, um, be for Best Film? They uh, they have what? Don't Look Up. They have Doom. They have uh, uh, Licorice, Licorice Pizza. They have The Licorice Power of the, Pizza. Licorice Pizza, The Power of the Dog. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I, some of the, I just think it's interesting how they have a couple that feel so funky to my brain of like best casting, which I honestly think should be an award more award yes. ceremonies give out. Like, we well, the, o the Oscars get, does, don't they have a casting? Uh, no. Ensemble, en ensemble. Are what were underrated? Who, for how much they? What's the what's the award ceremony that does ensemble best ensemble? But does that's for like ensemble performance, not ensemble. Mm, like, that has nothing to do with cast. Picked the cast. I thought the Oscars did that. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Uh, I like uh, they got documentary uh, the Rising Star Award. They have for one uh, Rising Star voted for by the public, not the uh, the BAFTA. They made they they made sure to have a category that America couldn't have a hand in outstanding British film, yeah. <laughs> uh, film not in English language. Okay, best like 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 the best foreign film. Uh, they got best document uh, interior. Uh, I like film not in foreign language. That feels more like specific and mm. helpful than foreign film. And I agree. Uh, I, I like specificity. Best lead, and then they have some some similarities here. Best leading mm -hmm. actor. No, and again, I think part of why people keep an eye on it, even in America, is it feels like a little bit of a. This will give a glimpse of what's going to happen probably in the Academy Awards. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think so. Best leading actor, for example, for best leading actor and best leading actress, uh, for example, you Mahershala Mahersha Ali, you got Will Smith. Uh, wow, let's uh, let's look at that best leading actor, uh, Adil Akhtar for Ali and uh, Ava. Uh, I've never even heard of that movie. I'm sorry. Mer, Mer Charlie is Swan Song. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, The Power of the Dog. Leonardo DiCaprio, Don't Look Up. Don't Look Up on that. Wait, the Netflix film? BAFTA Award for Don't Look Up. I, yeah, Don't Look Up seems to be in a fair number of these categories. I haven't seen it. I thought it was going to be one of those other, another one of those throwaway Netflix movies. Is that really good? Is it I good? I mean, it's a very stacked cast. It's a it's, stacked um, cast. Doesn't mean it's good. But I mean, did it's, you, have you seen it? I haven't. Do you want to see it? I. I you're like I haven't. Do you want to see it? I don't. <laughs> I okay. I just I because I know it's all like an allegory for climate change, which is just. Things have just been so bleak between COVID and just the state of the world. That mm. honestly, you know how sometimes it's like, I'm sure this is good, and I just don't know if I'm like mentally there. If right you're now. ready, yeah, yeah, you gotta be in a, you gotta be in a place to watch. But I've it. also heard it's not like, like it's it's depressing. It looks a little like, funny. It looks a little funny. Yeah, it's 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 uh you know satire more than a, yeah exactly. Like, like hold your head underwater. Uh, Stephen Graham for Bowling Point, Will Smith for King Richard. King Richard was a great movie. 
really good really good watch that uh maybe i should watch more I, I should probably watch the ones that i haven't seen uh best supporting actress real quick uh won't take up too much time uh supporting actress uh wait is it best is that best actress or best supporting actress it's lead here's leading and here's support where's leading actress where's leading did i did i miss it I think it's just best actor, best actress, and then support. Here, no, here is best leading actress. There we go, Lady Gaga, House of Gucci. I uh, hate that movie. I have not watched it yet. Did you? It's did, so was bad. she bad? Was she bad in it though? Was she? She's does fine. she? Does She's she deserve the best thing in it? But that's not saying much. Like I, know, I do love how crazy. I want to do a whole segment on just how insane Lady Gaga is because she, let's do it. it. Let's do it. I love a good life. By the way, guys, if you if you celebrity. have if you have not watched Amy's Newman's video uh, about movies that have passed the Bechdel test, go check it out. It's it def definitely should be cons uh, nominated for an Oscar. Uh, by the way, but go check. It. So yeah, if you ironically wanted... didn't pass the Bechdel test, but yeah, what? But you talked about I'm the only person in it. <laughs> Oh yeah, 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 yeah! I forgot. Yeah, it's me. One, uh, should just a, a woman with a another. Friend. Yeah, you should. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, well. I'm sorry. Well, I couldn't win them all. Damn it! I want. But no, Lady got. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. A, I hate that movie. That's the <laughs> movie. B, like she did so much of the like. There's no way to set yourself up for failure, like talking about how intense your creative process was. Right. You know, like nothing's going to make me watch a movie more critically than if I've read interviews with you being like, I literally vomited on set multiple times because I was so worked up and mm. emotional and I went to such a dark place. And then you watch it and she's like, it's time to take out the trash. And you're just like, um, was that Russian? It's it, she's Italian. I can't do it. So maybe point Gaga, but like, was Lady, no, was Lady Gaga auditioning like, to be Black Widow? Everyone in the movie's like doing the like really over the top Italian. Well, accent. I was just about like, to speak on that. Like I know you say I bring up his channel too much on on our channel, but John Campia is Italian, and he said and he said on his show. As an Italian, I th I was ready to be offended by some of these crazy accents, but um, Jay Leno's character, he, I forgot what he said about everybody else, but he said Jay Leno's, Leno's character. Yes. Jared Leto? Jer J oh. <laughs> That's what I meant. That's what I meant. Jared Leto. <laughs> I said Jay Leno. <laughs> Jared Leto. They, he was expecting to hate that performance, but he was like, Damn, he that I have relatives that or I know people or something like that that talk like that or act like like like, like stuff I like that. Like I'm not Italian, anything. so <laughs> I've never hated anything more than I've hated Jared Leto's performance in that movie. But he said, as an Italian, he it's, said, but this is hearsay from a third party, so don't don't take my word for it. I'm not Go saying ask John Campion. Offensive to the Italian people. I'm saying it was a bad performance, and his prosthetics are terrifying. Yeah, but he's old but smooth. It's so look up a picture of it. It's horrible. I saw it. I I, I like was I was impressed. Like old man shit, but then they didn't give him wrinkles, so he's just smooth. Yeah, because rich people get Botox. I he's was not impressed. Rich. I was impressed. Well, I haven't seen the movie. I was impressed because he, uh, because you could you can tell that was it was him. It's 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 one of the most embarrassing fucking performances I've ever seen in my life. Oh, oh, language. But moving on real quick. Uh, so after that, there's uh, Anna uh, Hames for uh, Licorice Pizza. She's great. I haven't Hello. seen that. Have you seen that movie? Is it great? Is I it did. good? I just watched it. Is it good? I gotta see it. Uh, it yeah. I have some I have some quibbles with it that I think a lot of people have. Uh, Does it pass the Bechtel test at any point? <laughs> uh, I think so. Mm. It also has a twenty-five-year-old in like a sort of relationship with a fifteen-year-old. I heard. I, I heard about that. I heard about that. But yeah. if you're willing to put that aside and kind of try if, to see it, for if, you're think, uh, if you're willing, if you're willing to put that aside, for, it's, it's a really <laughs> If you're willing to put that aside in 2022, which no one will is nowadays are, if this was 1995, it would have already had the Oscars. 
Well, and that's the other thing, like having to sort of, it's- not, isn't, it, isn't it a period piece? Isn't it, is it, it based- It is, it's set in 1973. And that's part of it of like, people wouldn't have really batted an eye at that in 1973. Exactly. And, and, you know. and you know what? And that's what people need to remember. While you're trying to judge everything on the on today's standards, think about like how I, or, yeah, look, that if she's in her 20s and he's in his, the character's 15, the actor probably really isn't a 15 year old. We're, uh, nobody right. today is going to be that dumb. I hope not. It's also, there's an innocence to it that I think helps it work. <laughs> mm hmm. Like there's a, it's, you know, it's all very like first love sort of. But do you, re do, but do you recommend it? Like, should I, I like, would recommend it. Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll, I've been curious about it. I'll, if, I will if, watch if it. If you can get past that, like, I know for some people it's just like, I will well, I'm a, that for that. And yeah. that's like, that's totally fair. Yeah. Uh, and I can respect that choice. But yeah. if, if you're cool with that. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm one of the, Not, well, you know me, you know, I'm, I'm, one of, I'm one of those guys that's going to go in knowing nobody really is underage and all this. I, right. I know that. And I, and well, I know yeah, it's uh, not, there's, it's not like there's like graphic sex scenes or anything like that. Like, like it's all very, it, it's not, not eat through mama thought being mm, mm. <laughs> chef's kiss. Love those scenes. No, uh, it's, it's, it's a very charming movie. But uh, uh, next up was uh, is it uh, Renata? Uh, is it Rinsev, the worst person in the world? I never heard of this film. Why does she look familiar, Renata Rinsevi? Why does she look so familiar? She looks so familiar to me. I gotta look this up. Uh, Joanne Scanslin, After Love, and then uh, Tessa Thompson in Passing. Pat, is that? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had the picture like, wrong. I don't think that's that, that's, that's, I'm sorry. I was off by one. She transformative performance. Like, like, <laughs> like, 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 oh yeah, like that's passing. Like, oh no, that's 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 so passing that that is a white woman right there. Yeah. <laughs> well, Tessa We're Thompson. We're talking about Jared Leto's prosthetic. Damn. But well, Tessa Thompson right there and passing that another movie I, I'm curious on seeing. Mm -hmm. And I and I and if we had more time, I would have gone into more of the categories, but we we just don't. Like for example, casting, choreographing, uh, editing. Uh, see, James Bond is uh, is in there. Uh, uh, production design. Uh, Nabaptist. We have uh, costume design, makeup, and hair. Oh, good. That's good. Uh, sound. Uh, obviously, okay. Obviously, special visual effects. That's good. You're like, yeah, I like that as a category. What? Uh, special visual effects. You're like makeup and hair. That's good. <laughs> Makeup, uh, makeup and hair. Gotta have that. That's good. No, I'm sorry if I said it so fast. You know what? Just because I did say it like that, I'm gonna give it some. I'm gonna put a spotlight on it. Uh, cre Cruella, uh, make for makeup and hair. Hey, hey, that's a good pick. They uh, for as far as makeup and hair, Cruella Deville did a great job for that. So I'm not mad at that uh, uh, pick. I haven't seen uh, this movie. Uh, was it uh, Cre Cereno? Cereno? I feel like it's getting some love at the Baptist. I don't know if that'll translate. I've, heard, I've been hearing a lot about it and I have and, I, and I'm curious about it. Obviously, that Dune. I, Dune, Dune is going to get some nominations, man. Dune's, I feel like it's not going to win the big awards, but I could see it doing a lot of like sound design. You, <laughs> you know what? And and when and then when things got busier, here's some behind the scenes stuff real quick. When things got busier and you had to like you know pull back from you know doing streams with me for a little while, and then uh, I got Sarah to come in. Sarah mm -hmm. is Sarah Sarah Catherine the Red. She is, I, and for some re re weird reason, I always have to say her full Instagram name. I don't know why. I just have to. Sarah Catherine the Red loved Dune. And whenever we talk about it on this channel, I talk about it as if I've seen it. I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> so, sorry, Sarah. Of, oh, my God. That's my, that's my fucking MO on this channel. I got a lot of opinions about this movie I haven't gotten to yet. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. I have not I watched it. I didn't see it, but I read a tweet. <laughs> I read a couple of tweets. We got uh, so we got Doom. We got the uh, the uh, the Eye of Tammy Faye with Lindsay Dowd. Uh, that was pretty good. Uh, and your other favorite movie, House of Gucci, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in this category of hair and makeup. Oh, come on, you didn't. Okay, well, how was he the hair and makeup? Driver hair that somehow made him look prepubescent. I'm yeah. upset. And then you didn't like that hair and makeup? Okay, I don't know. But uh, moving on. But yeah, and then. Um, what, what else? I like that rising star category. Rising star category. What is it? This, oh, uh, we have bottom. sound. We have special effects. We have British short animation. That's good. British short film. Uh, wait. 
That's not the. That's not sound of makeup. That's was rising that's star. Rising star. rising star category. Oh, that's interesting. I like that. Yeah. No, I think that's a fun, and I guess that's voted on by the public. Why does she look familiar? Is that she's uh, Anita in West Side Story? That she just hosted um, Saturday Night Live. Yeah. I she's have going places. She's a rising star. You, you see me a freeze framing right now. I have such a crush on her right now. <laughs> I have seen yeah, she's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Uh, Harris uh, uh, Dixon, very good looking guy. I am secure in my masculinity to say that as well. Uh, hey, I know her. Uh, Lashana Lynch uh, from, uh, she's in Bond. And oh, what else was she in besides Bond? She's the new double O, I thought was what I heard. I haven't seen it yet, but she's the new double O. Um, uh, Melissa, uh, Mel, uh, Melissa Simmons. Don't know her. I don't know she her. She looks very familiar to me. I don't know if I've seen anything she's been in. Uh, Cody Smith McPhee. Oh, yeah. He's in Year of the Dog, right? Oh, okay. I haven't seen Which it. I almost just called Hair Power, <laughs> of, the dog. Power <laughs> of the Dog. I always want to call it Hair of the Dog. So, But you know what? I don't know. Oh, Melissa Simmons is the girl from A Quiet Place. Oh my god, that is her. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay, wow. Okay. I never okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. And let me just go back tough, to tough Let me just go back to Miss De uh, Bells over there real quick. Oh, okay. okay. I got to watch West Side Story. Oh, okay. Uh but yeah. Yeah, you love her. Watch watch that. She's great in it. But uh The Baptist. There you go, guys. Look. I have never or watched. As we have dubbed it Lord Oscar. Lord, Lord Oscar, sir. This, uh, yeah, the Royal Oscars. Yeah, you to to mention to talk about the Baptist, you got to put your fingers up like this. The Baptist. That's, that's <laughs> if you're talking about House of Gucci. Oh, oh yeah, you're yeah, right. You gotta do a one what, of what, 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 what's the British thing? What's the British thing? Like the the tea with like holding a glass with the the, the yes. pink the pinky up as I drink my. This is such a the BAFTA, uh, the <coughs> BAFTA Awards. <laughs> there we go. I don't know what that was, but I did it. Yeah, hit him with a couple of rums. So no. <laughs> look, hey, look, I've never watched the BAFTA Awards, but for some reason, I'm going to be honest with you, when when Amy brought up the BAFTAs, I, I, the second I saw that text, I was like, I'm, you know what? I've never watched the Baptists. I don't but, even know if they're available in the U.S. But you know, I'm sure we'll maybe maybe I won't be able to catch it live, but I will watch them. I'll, I'll try to find a way to watch it. Maybe if on YouTube or whatever, I'll try to That's find it. Just the BBC, you know, you know. I'll, maybe I'll watch <laughs> it on that. You know, not not that BBC. Come on, get your head out of the gutter. But uh, I'll watch. I'll try to watch it, and I'll I want to check it out. I'm, I'm curious on it because uh, it, it was interesting. When the second you brought it up, it, it made me think I need to expand my horizons and, and check these things out. So I'm going to check out the Baptist. So there you go, guys. I'm going to do what I do and read some tweets about it and pretend I know. <laughs> you know that, well there you go well guys let us know what you guys let, let us know what you guys think thank you guys for watching another episode of talking through the media my, my background screen kind of messed up there i don't know what the hell happened there uh let us know what you guys think about what's uh what we all talked about share your thoughts and your uh questions comments and concerns let us know what you guys think at all time uh, i want to thank the og of uh talking through the media's Amy Newman, thank you for uh, co-hosting with me on uh, Friday. I know you have so much that you have to go to. Where, where are you going to be after after this? Where are you about to go? Uh, well, first I'm going to make some scatty and mm. <laughs> have dinner. Uh, and then you can catch me. If you're watching this live, you can catch me in mm, about three and a half hours. So nine o'clock pacific oh I, th I thought we were uh, running into your your uh next uh show well we got it we got three and a half hours hey let's no, hey, no, let's I talk about <laughs> I gotta, I gotta um yeah but if you're watching live um i will be on the keeg back tonight uh that's volume.com slash the keeg show uh yeah you can also always catch me on instagram at amy.n.newman on twitter at amy underscore n underscore newman um, my web series, Your Biggest Fan, is on YouTube. If you just search Amy Newman, Your Biggest Fan, that probably comes up. And, yeah. 
And yeah, there you go. And if you want to catch, and guys, you know me. If you want to uh, catch uh, me, you guys go to at T3 Media's or Chris W. Fagan on the, all of the Instagrams and Twitters and all that good stuff. Uh, I, I had a, a great time. I'm I'm glad that uh, Amy's uh, back. Amy, I'm I'm going to speak for her real quick because I think I can do that. She is going to be back every day now hosting talking to the media from monday through friday like no 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 she's not no i'm just lying i'm lying Great, she's let's not. have some salary discussions the, like like yeah uh let's, point uh, number one i'd like one like, <laughs> <laughs> like chris when you uh, when you can afford a budget then we'll talk about me being back uh uh every day like like hell hey i, I swear to god if i uh, i'm trying if i win that I lottery if i win that lottery you are you are the third person I'm gonna call, like right after I'm gonna first if I win the lottery I'm You're first call Ariana DeBose. The first two yeah well no well all right they're the fourth person I'm gonna call the first two people I'm calling is a couple of ex girlfriends to be like ha 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 then and then Ariana then I'll call you and be like hey would you like to do talking through the media as ever for you know uh well you know thousands and thousands upon thousands of dollars an episode you know and of course exactly what I'm worth. Thank you. right exactly it's worth millions she is worth millions by the way guys. To strike that friends contract maybe a million episode yep a mil. damn jesus christ god let me end this stream before my non-money that i don't even have yet because goes up in smoke uh guys thank you for guys for watching talking through the medias i appreciate it i had fun uh today uh remember follow us on all the social media send us your questions your comments your concerns take care of yourself uh your mental health and your physical health and always always be prepared take care of yourself guys it's cold over here in houston it's freezing it's like oh my god that's right you're in texas oh yeah it's like ooh, it's like in the 20 it's like in the teens and the 20s right now we do I not know how to handle that of like all your power went out and you're like hooked to a generator mm, yeah. just running this and yeah. your whole family's like chris yeah thanks governor hot wheels but hey i digress all right talking through the stay safe out there chris we're we're all thinking of uh of your lovely state right now well, no, no, no. Uh, wishing, wishing you all the best in a very chilly Texas. Yeah, I know. But but talking through the media is, was brought to you in front of a live studio audience of mass singers who will not make you want to walk away and protest. That's the best I got uh, today. Till next time, guys. <laughs> Peace out. Our supporters help make all this content possible, so make sure you check out our Patreon page so you can help us bring you the content you want. Push the pedal to the freaking metal. I'm turned up just like heavy metal.